Thanks for the support, guys. <laughs> I can still throw things that far, you know. Or I heckle back. <laughs> and I've got a microphone. seen one but I tend to walk around so yeah 
What room is this? ELG1. In ELG1, uh, what the microphone is in? Uh, there should be a new deck microphone on the table that we're picking up. Uh, is it just that one? Yeah. Yeah, because uh, this um, speaker walks around a lot. Oh, I've done. It's just not. I have to. Do you want a bell mic? Yeah, it'd be better for the recording. Yeah, if you could, that'd be really grateful. No worries, I'll meet you in the ERG at one. Talk to you in a minute, mate. Yeah. Legend, this guy. yeah. So we I said, oh, what are you doing tonight? He goes, nothing. It's like, well, when you come to the social night, he was there until about until closing. Yeah? He loves it. Is he, is he a university person? He was, yeah, he's university staff. Yeah. Yeah, so sorry, like the recording yesterday might be have no audio, because I was just. I don't even, I'm not even sure what it was supposed to use. There wasn't one on the desk like that. Yes. Well, this wasn't here. Well, I wasn't in this room. It's a different room. Oh, okay. Um, so no, I didn't know I was supposed to use. There one. was there one that someone said the room there, might be mic'd up itself. But was there one that's like in a pod? Yeah, could have been. Yeah. So that that picks up as well because it wouldn't come out the speakers because it's too. Yeah, too small I was all over the place. I was sat on. Yeah. Um, I did. T I did tell the um, volunteers to make sure. So I have to go into every room and literally physically tell them to do it. Yeah. Um. Webs. Okay, but when you get to the double checking times, 
it's all automatic, you can't override it. It's really okay. Okay. Yeah. It's cool. it's never override. Uh, no, I think it's just like We've got like stuff that you can do, but it's, like, it's quite flexible when it comes to the easy iteration. Um, we can go into like 8.5 immediate stuff migration if we have to do it. We should be alright. Yeah, I can see what's down the corridor now. Uh, things are happening. What time does the recording automatically stop? Because there might be a little bit of problem because we're just a little bit late. Is there any leeway? Five minutes after. Five minutes after, okay. Yeah. So. Sorry, That's okay. Yeah. Right. Actually, the worst that happens is the stuff that isn't on the recording. One, two. Yeah. There we are. Hello, is that doing things? Is there, is there words that are louder than before? Partial robot. Right, so before we talk about Migrate, which is what you're all here for, um, kind of a bit in the spirit of uh, what Chris was talking earlier about and uh, where you come from in Drupal. Um, Ten years ago, I got made redundant from working in a completely different sector, and I had no idea what I was going to do uh, for a job going forward. But I had started to think about maybe making websites, and there was this user group in Manchester that I started to go to, and it was because of the support I got from that that I was able to build a career um, working independently with Drupal and go and work at places like Capgemini and have a really awesome career. And it's important for me to feed that back. So I'm now, along with uh, Phil Norton and Irina McAvoy, an organiser of the Northwest Triple User Group in Manchester. Um, we have monthly meetups. If you can't make it to Manchester for that, we actually stream them all live on YouTube. And we have like sometimes international speakers flying in to talk at um, our monthly meetups. And we round up all Drupal News as well. And uh, for the past two years, in November, we've run an unconference event. And we're doing the same this year. We don't have the date and venue finalised yet. We were hoping to announce that this weekend. Uh, but this November, if you have nothing on, probably the first weekend, we're going to be running an unconference event in Manchester. It'll be really great to see uh, some of you there. If you follow um, NW Doug on Twitter, you'll see all the announcements about that. Did anyone actually go to this event last year? Was it good? Yes. Would you go again? Yeah. Would you drag other people there? I'm just saying. <laughs> Whether they want to go or not. Okay, great. That's that over. Um, that's not what's supposed to happen next. Let's start this again.
Okay, so uh, we're going to be talking about uh, the Migrate module uh, today. My name is, for those of you who don't know me, is Elliot Ward, but most people call me a Eli. I'll be some form of Eli T, like Eli underscore T on Twitter. I'm Eli hyphen T on Drupal.org, um, and I've been involved in Migrate for quite some time. I first got involved when we were working on uh, the Royal Mail project at Capgemini. As a redesign of that, we had to port the entire content into a new site. And we did it using uh, the Migrate module. At the time, that was probably the biggest Drupal site in Europe. Um, and I led a team of four working on the Migrate from that. And I've been involved in Migrate to different capacities as it's uh, evolved since then. <coughs> so what we're going to talk about today, I'm going to tell you what I'm going to tell you. Then I'm going to tell you those things. And then I'm going to tell you what I've told you. So <coughs> to flesh that out, telling you what I'm going to tell you. We're going to go through some background about Migrate. We're going to talk a little bit about its architecture. It's one of the nice pieces of Drupal where you can actually talk about its architecture. It didn't just happen by accident. We're going to do some buildings of some Migrate by example, so you can see how we put together some very simple examples, actually run them, see them working, and then we're going to make them more complicated as we go along once we've got the gist of looking at the most simple migration you can really do. And we'll look at some alternative approaches, some alternative ways of using Migrate, and some alternative mechanisms that you might want to consider using instead of Migrate. So what is Migrate? What is this thing we're talking about? And it's basically a framework that we can use to take data from other external sources and move it into our Drupal site. It's a framework. It doesn't do everything for you. It's a way to build your own. And it's been around for a while. Migrate, as I, I started to get involved with Migrate in Drupal 6, um, where it came as two contrib modules, Migrate and Migrate UE. Drupal 6 and Drupal 7, very, very similar. And then it actually moved into Drupal Core in 8.0 as an experimental module, not just for importing data to your Drupal site from other sources, but also as the primary mechanism for upgrading a Drupal 6 or Drupal 7 site to Drupal 8. So instead of using the hook update system like we did to migrate from Drupal 6 to 7 and write all that in code, we could actually write much better structured migrations to support moving from one version of Drupal to another. And not just migrating content, but also migrating all your configuration as far as possible as well. Um, when it went into core, it was split into Migrate um, and Migrate Drupal. So the parts of Migrate that were just generic to migrating any data were in the Migrate module. Anything specific from migrating from prior versions of Drupal to the current version of Drupal went into its own module, uh, Migrate Drupal. And then Migrate Drupal UE, a user interface on the front of Migrate Drupal, turned up in 8.1.0. And it's really important to note that Migrate was experimental when it in, went into core. And it wasn't just experimental in theory. We actually changed some backwards compatibility things when we went to 8.1 and broke some work that had already been done. We have the right to do that with experimental modules. But Migrate in 8.5 that's coming out very soon is now marked as stable. So after two and a half years, we have a stable upgrade path from uh, previous versions of Drupal, which is pretty cool. Um, you know that Migrate Drupal and Migrate Drupal UE are not yet marked as stable. The issues that are blocking them from being marked as stable are all multilingual issues. So if you're not actually doing multilingual Drupal, Migrate Drupal and Migrate Drupal UE are effectively stable right now, but we can't mark them as such until we have multilingual support. So what do we use Migrate for? There are three kind of use cases for it. There's the Drupal old version to new version upgrade. There's the scenario where you're building a new site on top of a legacy site. Site's already there. You need to migrate all the content across as a one-off and build your new site in a Drupal format from some kind of legacy whatever system. Or you might actually want to be continuously migrating data. So for instance, if you are not the master of the user logon process and you need to continuously be updated about data from users from another site, you can run periodic migrations to catch up with your um, active directory or however you're capturing uh, your users. 
So, the architecture we mentioned, we have one now, um, and migrators already have, always had one, uh, is a process called extract, transform, load. So three-step process. This is not a new idea. This is a, a software architectural idea that's been around since the 70s, but it very much transforms it into three separate pieces of the pipeline. So extract, transform, load. When we say that, it sounds obvious, but you will actually see people trying to migrate sources in effectively one step maybe doing a SQL insert that goes and talks off to another database and transforms it all in one query. So we very much um, separate it into these three pieces of the puzzle. So how do we actually do this in Drupal? The extract part is covered by something called source plugins. The architecture on Migrate is very, very much plugin oriented. I think there's been a plugin talk today, or there might even be one going on right now. Uh, you don't need to worry too much about how the plugins work. We will see how to subclass things and how to implement uh, plugins here. And you might want to go back and look at that other talk uh, if you still have some questions around how we use plugins here. So to extract, we use uh, source plugins. And source plugins are a subclass of this uh, source plugin base that comes in our migrate module. In core, we have two subclasses of this. We have a SQL base, and we use that for extracting data from any database that we can extract with Drupal's database driver. We also have embedded data source, which you won't see used uh, too often. We're not going to go into detail on that today. But it's where you actually embed a data source within your migration itself, rather than um, from an external source. Those are the only sources you get in core. Uh, there's another module, Migrate Plus, that we'll talk about, and that actually will give you some other options. It gives you a URL class, which we can then use to migrate data from XML, SOAP, or JSON. And that can either be from a local file, or we can actually have that from a mo remotely retrieved file. So maybe we're picking up our XML, SOAP, or JSON feed over HTTP, HTTPS, and we can extract data from there. And there's a separate module called Migrate Source CSV, and that just exists to provide a migration source for CSV files, comma separated value files. So if someone's got a bunch of data they've built in Excel, you can use the Migrate Source CSV to actually turn that into a source of data that is then suitable for importing into our Drupal application. There is currently a patch to bring Migrate Source CSV into core. So that's available without having to have a separate um, external module. And one of the main drivers for that is the out of the box initiative, where we're building a demo site when you install Drupal, and it comes with a bunch of content. We have a custom way of saving that content to the database, and it would be much better to use Migrate to do that. But in order to do that, we need somewhere we can actually migrate the data from that we can ship with Drupal. Much better to use a CSV file. There's no way to ship a database with Drupal. OK, I've said a lot of words, and I'm just wondering whether I'm still keeping the room. Are people happy so far? Is this a good pace? OK. I was just going to ask if you didn't mention Migrate Tools. Yes, we will mention Migrate Tools. Uh, we're not summarizing all the modules that might be helpful up front. We will discover them as we go along, and they become relevant uh, to what we're doing. So nothing that we're doing yet needs Migrate Tools, but we will totally come to Migrate Tools. Yes? So the question is, is it possible to summarize what was in Drupal 8 but wasn't in 7? Yeah. Um, so the technical answer to that is everything, because Drupal, because Migrate wasn't in Drupal 7, um, but that would be in Pernickety and presumably mean including Contrib as well. Yeah. Um, not right now off the top of my head. Uh, we could look at that after if you're really interested. Um, I would worry about that if you look for something that you need to do and you find it's not there. <clears throat> okay, so that's the extract port covered by source plugins. The transform data part, as we're actually fettling data to actually make it fit our new system, is done by something called process plugins. Okay, These, this concept did not exist in my rate, Drupal 6 and Drupal 7. This is a new, uh, in Drupal 8, the fact that we have these uh, plugins. Okay, and again, we have a source class in Drupal Migrate process plugin base. 
Um, and we have a bunch of instances of this already in uh, Drupal Core Migrate. So if we want to change data as we go through, we can see we have loads of these. We'll look at some of these in detail, useful things like migration lookup and get, um, skip on empty. There's lots of things that we can do out of the box with Drupal Core to actually change our data as we're going through. And if you find something that you need to do with your data as you're taking it from one place to another, you can write your own process plugins to do that, or you could look for them uh, elsewhere. There's a couple more in um, Migrate Drupal, which comes with Core. Very specific things about transforming data to be more suitable for Drupal 8 than it would be for Drupal 6 or 7. Migrate Plus also has a couple of useful ones about actually dynamically generating entities or looking up entities to see if they exist as you're going through that are kind of useful. Typically, if you're migrating stuff and the taxonomy terms that refer to those things at the same time, that kind of scenario. Final part is uh, load, and for that we use destination plugins. Destination plugins, again, we have a uh, source, uh, we have a class that we subclass, this destination base. Having two screens, I don't know whether I should laser things on both screens, I feel like I'm leaving people out. This destination base uh, class. A lot of the time, we won't actually have to subclass this because we get a bunch of these with Drupal Core Migrate and also with the Drupal Core modules that provide entity types. So as we're saving things into Drupal, a lot of the time, they will be entities. There'll be nodes, there'll be taxonomy terms, there'll be menu items. The way things are typically structured in Drupal 8 is if you provide a module that provides a new entity type, you can provide the destination plugin to save that entity type in your module. So if you invented a totally new type of entity, it wasn't um, a node, it wasn't a menu type, it was something completely custom to you. You might want to actually, in your module that provides that, provide a migrate destination for it so other people can easily create those from other sources. If you look through core, you'll find instances of these actually in the respective core modules. So, for instance, we have file entities. We'll have a look at that. The destination plugin for file entities is not in the migrate module. It's in the file module. And we'll use that one a bit later. So, let's have a look at how these three things plug together. We have our source plugin that extracts our fields from the records that we're interested in. So, here's our source system. And our source plugin is going to select the rows from here we want and the fields from that row that we're interested in. There might be a load of junk data that we're not interested in. It's not going to have any usefulness in our new system whatsoever. We can then run through that through a series of process plugins. Okay? So we can pipe these process plugins together. Process plugins might actually take multiple instances. And then our destination plugin is what is used to load that data back into Drupal. Okay, is everybody happy with this picture and how it fits together and what our component pieces are? There's a little bit less nodding than there was before. We need to kind of get like happy with this because we're going to start implementing some of these things, okay? So three steps, three kind of Drupal components that we're going to need to do each. Source plugins take our data from the source, say what we're interested in, and present it to the next level. Next level is where we use the process plugins, maybe multiple ones, uh, maybe chaining them together, maybe combining fields using these process plugins to get a set of fields that we can then present to our destination plugin, which is responsible for saving that into Drupal as a node, as a menu item, as a user, as a role. Okay, we have some nods. Maybe it will become a bit more... Um, clear as we go through some examples. So how do we actually do this? Now, to do some examples of this, uh, we need to have a source system. Um, so has anyone heard of the IMDB? Hans? Okay, so we're going to use the IMDB as our source for these examples. Okay, here's the IMDB. No. Here's the IMDB. Okay. So, okay, this isn't the real IMDB, sorry. 
This is the only joke. That's, that's the only joke that we've done now. It's no more fun. Um, so what we have here, this is a, a symphony app that's just built with Doctrine. So we're going to use this uh, for our source data. Uh, let's have a look at what we've got in this application. Okay, we've got a bunch of monkeys in this uh, monkey database. Here's Isambard. So for each uh, monkey, we have a name, we have a description, and we've got some relational data as well. So every monkey's got a favorite tree. That's a separate data item in its own right. And every monkey has a best friend. Okay, so if you look at Isambard, he saw his best friend was Ozymandias. Okay, Ozymandias is a gorilla. Uh, he likes hanging out in bananas, trees, and his best friend is Isambard. Uh, Akina is a snow monkey, so she has her own favorite tree. Achilles is very angry and has no other friends except for himself, so he's his own best friend. Look how angry this monkey is. Have you ever seen him? Even like even proper monkeys while they're eating things. Um, so we have monkeys and we have, we have some trees as well. So these are data items as well. Um, and this is nothing to do with Drupal. This is just uh, Symphony and Doctrine and Twig. Uh, bundled together. Um, can everyone read this? Is this readable? Do we need bigger? Okay, cool. Um, so let's have a look at our database for that. So here's our data model. We can see we've got two tables. Got a monkey table and a tree table. Okay, each monkey's got like an internal ID. It's got an ID to his favorite tree, so that's a referential um, entity. Uh, it's got a name, description, just text. Uh, they've got an ID of their best friend, so that's gonna point to the ID of their best friend. And we've got an image file name. So let's have a look at what we've got in there. Select star from monkey. Okay, and we can see that this maps to what we've just looked at. Isambard, his best friend, has ID 52. ID 52 here is Ozymandias. And we also have that trees table. Okay, so trees. Trees is a lot more simple. You just have a name for each tree and ID so they can be mapped to from. Trees don't have favorite trees, I don't think. I don't know a lot about trees. No one's ever mentioned that to me. Okay, so we have that and we have in our Drupal site. Here is Drupal. And we can see, um, this is a standard install with a couple of content types that we've um, added in. So we have a content type for monkey and a content type for tree. This is what we're going to migrate into. And we have an entity reference to represent that best friend relationship. We have a body field, which we're going to use to pull that description into. We have a favorite tree and we have an image. So when we finish, we're going to actually migrate all this data across. And we also have a basic tree which is just a description because we have nothing referring back to the other way. Cool, so two steps when we're actually building a migration. We actually ought to actually perform a migration. First, we have to build it, say what our source plugins, destination plugins, and which process plugins we're gonna use. Write some code to do that. And then we have a second step where we're actually going to control performing the process that will migrate the data according to the rules that we have specified. Okay, so this is our data model. Just to reiterate this, we have the monkey table. We have a relationship there for a best friend ID to ID, and we have a relationship to the tree table. So, remember, extract, transform, load, source plugins, process plugins, uh, destination plugins. We're going to need a source plugin. This is a database, so we're going to use the SQL base um, plugin that comes with core. And when we're using the SQL base plugin, the way that we use it is we subclass it. 
Okay, not all source plugins work like this. So if you're using the CSV one, you don't subclass it. You just reuse it and put in some parameters. But for the SQL base one, we actually subclass what we get with core. So we're going to extend SQL base. When we extend it, we have to provide this query function. And this is just a, database, a Drupal database driver query to say, we're going to select from the monkey table, and this is just an alias, and these are the fields that we're interested in. Okay, that's responsible for going to the database and actually getting that data. Fields says what we're going to present to the process plugins. What are we going to make available from this source to the process plugins to be able to run through those funnels and get out the other end and present to the destination plugin. So you can see we're actually passing these through all with the same name and we're giving them descriptions as well. Okay, they'll show up in some of these right interface elements that we'll expose. Okay. Finally, we actually return this get IDs function. This identifies how in the source system we can identify each row as being unique. Okay, we have to know the unique identifiers from the source system so we can keep track of what we're migrating from our source to our destination. And Migrate will actually build this map table automatically for us if we know how to identify the source rows to our destination IDs. The destination IDs will be something like a node ID if we're, if we're generating nodes, but we don't know what they are in the source. This means that we can look up anything at any time, and there's loads of reasons why we might, might want to do this. For a start, we might want to work out how far through a migration we are. How many things have we migrated? Where have we put them? Can we roll that back? Can we undo that? If we need to know where something was migrated from so we can look it up later, can we do that? So because we have this get IDs and we know how to identify things in the source uniquely with this, we can um, do that. Okay, so that's our source <coughs> plugin, simple as that. Destination plugin, we're just going to use uh, one that's provided by core. We're going to migrate to nodes. Nodes already have um, uh, an entity node plugin destination that we can use. And to, we're going to basically do a migration of the very simplest data first. To keep it simple, we're not going to worry about the references. We're just going to migrate the name of the monkey uh, and its description. Okay? So we need to, for this destination plugin, give a type, a title, and a body field. Type is the type of node. Okay? And that's always going to be the same. It's going to be monkey. And we're going to use some process plugins as well. So here's our source. Here's all the things that we've said we're getting out from the source. And here's the things we need to have in our destination. And our funnel is going to be pretty straightforward. The type is going to come from this default value of monkey. OK, we're not actually getting that from the source. It's always going to be the same. And our name and our description are going to use the process plugin that's just called get. And all get means is we're going to not change these on the way through. So we're just mapping name directly to title and description directly to body. OK? All making sense? This is the simple bit. We are going to get more complicated. So um, we have one more piece to tie it together. And that is where we say which source plugin we're going to use, which destination plugin we're going to use, and which process plugin we're going to use to get from one to the other. And we're going to use that using config entities in Migrate Plus. Not all ways of constructing migrations actually use this model. Some use code to define and tie all these together. Core uses code. Migrate Plus is slightly different to core when it's doing that. So we have two pieces of config. We're going to create a group because you can group migrations together. You don't have to, but it's good practice to do that. So this is just a piece of config uh, to define our group. It's got a name, it's got an ID and a label, and some text information about it. The only piece that we really need to worry about here is the shared configuration. Shared configuration is passed to any sources that, or any migrations that are in this group. And we're saying we have a source key of IMDB. Now, if you think back to when we specified our source plugin, we didn't actually define where our database was. We said what the table was, but we never said where the database was. 
if we put this source key here, that is then a mapping to something we've put in our settings PHP where we've put a second database. Normally in Drupal you'd have a default database here with a key default, but here we've added a second one, IMDB. And that means that this IMDB is going to go to this database and all our connection details that we need to talk to it are in here so we don't have to specify them on a per migration basis. Here's our migration itself. Okay, we've called this the monkey node migration because it's where we're going to get our monkey nodes from. We've put it in the group that we've just defined, IMDB. Our source is going to be the IMDB monkeys plugin. That was the annotation ID we gave to our plugin that we defined earlier. The destination is going to be entity node. We're just creating nodes here. And here's where we map our process plugins. Okay, so these are our three destination fields. Type, we're going to use the default plugin value. And we're going to say that default value is going to be monkey for every single row. Here we have a little bit of shorthand. Here we're saying title, and then we just say name. So if we don't actually specify a process plugin name, it assumes you're going to use get. It assumes you're going to pass these things through unchanged. So our title is going to be mapped directly to name, and our body in Drupal is going to come from the description thing exposed by our source. And this final dependencies thing, this is nothing to do with the migration itself. This is a config thing, because this is actually migrate plus migration entity. If we were to uninstall our module that provided this, we would not actually delete the configuration. So here we're just putting an enforced dependency on the migrate monkeys module, which is carrying this, so that when we uninstall that module, our migration is uninstalled as well. Otherwise, it would remain because it belongs to migrate plus. Okay. Let's have a look at what it actually looks like when we are running one of these migrations. So, migrate tools. Who asked for migrate tools? Right. So we use migrate tools to, it's one way of running a, drush, of running a migration, and it lets you run it through drush commands, and it also uh, lets you run it through the GUI. It's not the only way of running migrations. Core runs migrations itself in code when it's doing an upgrade. Core can never be dependent on Drush. You can never rely on Drush being available for core functionalities. And there's a couple of other modules that will let you run Migrate that we'll talk through later. But Migrate Tools is probably, the, at the moment, the best trodden path. It's the thing that you'll find, the mechanism you'll find the most references to it. So it provides you a bunch of Drush commands. So if we come here. And we jump out of here. Oh, uh, who is using Drush 9? Who is using Drush 8? Who doesn't know which version of Drush they're using? Who isn't using Drush? Who, who, know, who doesn't know what Drush is? Hold on, who does know what Drush is? OK, so one thing to be wary of, uh, if you are using Drush 9 already, and I think if you do a Composer Require Drush Drush now, you probably will get Drush 9. Not all the migrate tool commands work with Drush 9. If you look at the code, it looks like they do. It looks like they've been implemented, but there are issues. If you have a look at the issue queue for uh, migrate tools, you'll find um, at least three issues uh, relating to this that I'm currently working on. Um, you can still run migrations, but if you want the full suite of commands, then you probably want to fall back to Drush 8 if you can for now. I've got um, Drush 8 here, just because it's we know that we hit issues with the other one. So let's have a look at which migrate commands we get with Drush. OK, so we've got migrate field source, which will show us the fields that we've got on our source. Uh, import, which actually does migrate. Messages will get you a bunch of stuff back. Reset status, if you've actually hit a control, so if you've terminated a migrate halfway through, it'll still think it's running. So you might need to do a reset status, otherwise it won't let you start it again. Uh, we can undo migrations, we can see the status of migrations, and we can do a controlled stop on a migration that is running. Um, so, let's have a look at our migrate status. We have nothing because we haven't enabled the module yet. So let's enable our module. Oh, yeah, yeah. Cheers. And now, is it this? Yes. OK, so what I've just enabled here 
is this module here, Migrate Monkeys. Here's the config that we just pointed out. And we have a plugin, which is the source that we created when we subclassed the SQL base uh, source. This is all just the code that I've just shown you. So I've just enabled this, and we have the very simple um, stuff to migrate there. Now that we've enabled this, we can use the migrate status command to see what migrations we have in the system. OK, so here we have monkey node. It's the one we defined. Idle. It's got a total of five rows. So it tell you how many things there are in the source system. And we haven't imported any of them. Should we try and import them? Yes, thank you, Phil. I'll import them for Phil. Um, so to migrate them, we use MI or MIM. I think MI, if you try and use that, it will be deprecated. They're going to get rid of that. Uh, let's prove that. OK, so yeah, it's told us it's my, it, that, that's been uh, deprecated. So when you start using Drush 9, that won't work. That we know that one won't work. It's not one of the ones that doesn't work by accident. Um, and say so we process five items, five created, um, zero updated, zero failed. If we have a look at our system now, we can see we have five monkeys. But all we've done so far is migrate their names and their descriptions. Everyone clear on how we got to that part? Okay. So we can also do a migrate rollback. If we decide stuff went wrong, we don't want that information anymore. Okay, because we built that map of where we were migrating stuff to and from, we know what we created when we did that migrate. So we can roll it back and just go and delete all that data and pretend that migrate it had never happened. It's all gone. How exciting. Right. And because we are in um, Migrate Tools, Migrate Tools relatively recently has implemented some GUI facilities. So we can actually, in our Drupal from the front end, we can have a look at structure. And we have migrations in our structure here. Here's the groups that we have. We have this default group. If we hadn't created our own group, uh, migrate tools would show our migration in that default group instead. We can have a list. We can see this is the label that we called it. It's the monkey node migration. That's what we just fed to Drush. OK, and we can see all the things that we map from our source. We can see the processes that they go through to get there. Right? This is the process thing that we just built in our configuration. We can't really interrogate the des destinations yet. There's some patches to try and move this forward so you can see what's required from the destination fields, uh, which is a bit of a thorny issue. Uh, we're working on that as much as we can. Right. We totally need to rattle on quite rapid. Um, <coughs> so yeah, and we also have the ability to run through these. This is, all, this is all pretty new. Not all migrate runners actually provide GUI tools. Some of them deliberately don't. OK, so we've done the first running. Now, let's look at some kind of simple dependencies and how we do that. So, if we remember our relationship between monkeys and their favorite trees, um, you can see that we have these IDs. If we pull these um, straight across into our destination systems, these IDs aren't going to mean anything anymore. Those IDs aren't how we identify things in the new system. So they're going to be pointing at the wrong thing. They might not be pointing at anything valid. They might be pointing at something valid that's uh, the wrong valid thing. Well, it might be pointing at something that's actually quite dangerous. So we need to have a way of getting around that. So we're going to do a tree migration. We're not going to look at the code for that because it's even simpler than the monkey migration. Okay? It's just the same type of data again. Um, but if we actually force the trees to be migrated first and then use the migration lookup plugin, we'll actually fix these as we do the migrate because we'll know, we'll be able to use that marvelous migrate map that we build up to work out where stuff in the old system went in the new system. OK, so we do that. This is the stuff we've already done. And we had a new process plugin to say, we're going to use migration lookup. And it's the tree node is the migration that we're going to use to look that migration relationship up. 
Okay, and we do that by just adding this migration dependency here. This is the part that says <coughs> you have to run the tree node before you run the monkey node migration, or else I'll stop you. <coughs> and also here's we're saying we're going to use that migration lookup plugin to look at the tree node. Uh, and our source is going to be the favorite tree ID. That's how we identify it uniquely in the source system. Okay, so I'm just going to uninstall my module. This is just so I can import some clean configs. I'm just going to change uh, the version of code we're running. Okay, so I just updated our code in place to have that new relationship I've just shown you on the screen. And let's re-enable our module. So now we have that uh, enforced dependency. If I try and, oh, let's have a quick look at our status. Okay, so we've got the two. Now we've got the tree node and we have the monkey node. And if I try and migrate our monkey nodes, it will not let me. So we haven't met the requirements. You need to actually migrate all the trees first so we can work out how all those relationships fall out. Okay, so one of the nice flags you can do is uh, minus minus all on migrate import, and that will migrate everything. If you have structured dependencies like this and they can be resolved to a correct order, migrate will do that for you. So if I just tell it to migrate everything, it will work out for itself it needs to do the trees first. Okay, so it's done the trees first, and because we've already done the trees, uh, we can do the monkeys. The migrate one thing. The this. Line does. No, 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 no. Ignore that. That's something that we will point out later if we have time. Okay. But we might not. Um, we're probably going to, we were slightly late starting this, so we're probably going to overrun a little bit. Um, if you need to leave on time, that's cool. I will not be offended if people start filing out. If people start filing out because they're bored, you can do that too. I don't mind that either. Um, <clears throat> okay, but if we do that, if we now have a look at our site that we have the contents. We can see we've migrated all our trees, we've migrated all our monkeys, and if you have a look at the monkeys, see our entity reference to their favorite tree is set, okay? And we know that Isambard and Ozymandias like hanging out in the banana tree, and Akina likes hanging out in the ash tree, okay? So it's fixed those all. We haven't brought those IDs across, we just remapped them to Drupal's way of doing things. Everyone happy now? Cool, so things can get a bit tricky though. Dependencies can get slightly more complicated. <coughs> Let's think about our best friend relationship. Okay, remember with the trees, we fixed the issue that we had by migrating all the trees first and all the monkeys. But here we have a relationship that's to the same type. We can't fix it in the same way because we can't migrate all the monkeys before we migrate all the monkeys. It doesn't make sense. We just can't do that logically. There's no way to do that. But we can still use the same mechanism. We can still specify that relationship in the same way. And Drupal can kind of fix it. Let's have a look. Let's have a look at how it does that and kind of the weird offshoots you can get. So I'm just going to roll back our migrations. Roll back supports the minus minus all flag as well. And I'm just going to change our code. So the version of the code that has this new relationship in. Okay, and the new relationship is done. This is exactly the same as for the tree, it's just we're kind of referring to ourselves here. Now, before we do migrate it, let's just have a look at our data that we have. <coughs> 